GPT-5 for scheduled release in a few hours, this video will show you 10 of the most anticipated features that are quite likely going to be coming. So one of the features that's going to be coming is the increased coding ability. One of the features that we know that is prominent in many different AI models is the ability for good coding models. If a model can code really, really well, then that opens up a whole can of worms for how people might use the model to develop SaaS programs. Now, one way that I know a lot of people want to use GPT-5 is to build programs. And on this screen, you can see that literally 17 hours ago, Sam Altman tweeted that we are entering the fast fashion of SaaS very, very soon. So essentially what that means is that we will be able to basically build programs and applications relatively quickly for very, very cheap. This is kind of like, you know, fast fashion where you can build clothes for very, very cheap. Well, not build clothes, but you know, manufacture clothes for very, very cheap. And that kind of era existed due to the fact that labor is very cheap when it comes to making clothes. Now, of course, we don't need to dive into fashion, but essentially what he's saying here is that GPT-5 could potentially be a model that allows you to build programs almost instantly. So one thing I'm currently worried about is, are there going to be various startups out there like Lovable that are basically going to be destroyed overnight? Personally, I don't think so. Even if GPT-5 can build insane applications quickly, I still do think that most people will continue to use the Claude series of models. One thing that I do know is that Anthropic is gaining market share. Recently, they've started gaining more ARR, more revenue, and their valuation is slowly creeping up on that of OpenAI's. But what's crazy though, which is kind of like a 50-50 thing that I saw, is that Anthropic revoked OpenAI's API access to its models on Tuesday. Multiple sources familiar with the matter tell Wired, OpenAI was informed that its access was cut off due to violating the terms of service. So if you don't know what you know this is, basically, if you work at an AI startup, you can't really use an LLM or an AI tool in order to make your work better. That's because all of these companies, in the terms of service, they essentially bar you from using their outputs to develop a competing product. Even OpenAI has this. So essentially, some people are confused because they're like, wait a minute, if GPT-5 is so good at coding, why wouldn't you just use that to develop the further models or make GPT-5 even better? I'm not entirely sure, but I do think that GPT-5 should be a decent amount better than the other models at coding. But I guess we're going to have to see. Now, the second one that is really simple is that, of course, the model is going to have better answers overall. Now, I know that seems pretty, pretty simple, like, duh, it's going to, you know, have better answers overall. That's exactly what we would expect. However, the way how it achieves this, we aren't entirely sure. And I think that's what's the interesting part. So there was this article, and I will have a video that does a deep dive on this, but it talks about the idea of a universal verifier. And that's the term for a more automated way of making sure a model is producing high quality answers during reinforcement learning, as Erin, Amir, and another reporter reported on Friday. And OpenAI have developed a unique technique to improve its forthcoming GPT-5 model. And basically, the universal verifier, what they were saying in this article, the TLDR, the too long didn't read version, is that they found a way to somehow get a verifier for qualitative questions. So you know how like with a math question, if you ask is five plus five, 10, we all know that it's 10 and we can easily verify the language model's output. But if I ask, is this piece of writing the best writing ever done? Or is this paragraph better than this one? It becomes hard to verify that because those are qualitative subjects and they're pretty subjective. There is no objective truth. Sometimes it's down to personal preference. So OpenAI apparently have made large progress in this area. Now, when we take a look at some of tweets that were deleted about GPT-5, we can see one of them here. This person said, testing GPT-5 internally and it's feeling really good. The notable strengths is that it's autistically following instructions and calling tools. 11 file edits in a single tool call. For long horizon tasks, it stays on track and completes everything. It works really well with to-do lists. It doesn't yap, it just calls tools and only reports back when necessary. And it also writes code that just works. We'll dive into some of the more things here, but I think you guys should understand that better answers overall, that's what happens when you have a much better base model. Now, also there was this leak with SimpleBench. I'm not entirely sure if this is true, 
But nonetheless, I think there is a strong possibility that this is true. And if you aren't familiar with what Simple Bench is, let me break it down for you. So Simple Bench is a recently developed benchmark that is designed to evaluate these AI models on reasoning tasks where ordinary humans, generally those with high school level knowledge, outperform even the most advanced AI models. Unlike traditional benchmarks, the thing that I like about this benchmark so much is that most humans still surpassed AI tools. So this benchmark focuses on categories such as spatiotemporal reasoning, social intelligence, and linguistic adversarial robustness, which are basically trick questions. And this benchmark consists on over 200 carefully crafted multiple choice questions. And the average for a human is around 83.7%, but apparently GPT-5 gets 90%. Now, I'm going to add some information. GPT-5 was tested on the public set, so it is possible that there could have been some data contamination, but we aren't sure just yet. If GPT-5 does beat humans on this benchmark, which is probably one of the best to determine its overall reasoning, I think it's safe to say that AI would be advancing at an incredibly rapid speed because I remember the time when this benchmark was just made and models were only getting around 10 to 20%. Now, before we dive into the other section of AI news, if you're working with AI tools, but you're constantly switching tabs, juggling models or hitting paywalls, there's actually a better way. It's called a chat LLM and it's easily the most powerful all-in-one AI platform I've ever used. You get access to every top tier AI model. I'm talking GPT 4.1, Claude 4, Gemini 2.5, Rock 4, all under one roof. No more bouncing between platforms. But it doesn't just stop there. With the Deep Agent, you can do everything. Build apps with a single prompt, generate full documents or pitch decks, even launch agents that browse the web and connect to services with Deep Agent MCP. If you need visuals, you can get access to cutting edge image and video generation tools. If you need code, ChatLM includes code LLM, a pro level coding environment powered by multiple models. And if you want to stay organized, you've got projects, built in task file management systems that integrate directly into your workflow. And the craziest part about all of this is that every single feature is just $10 a month. That's Deep Agent, Code LLM, App LLM, Rock Access, everything for less than a single lunch. If you sign up using my link, you can get started with Chat LLM today. Seriously, stop making it harder than it has to be. What kind of versions are we going to be getting for GPT-5? And this one is a little less speculation because just before I decided to publish this video, I came across a tweet which basically told me about all of this. And so essentially, these logos that you see right now, these are actually the official names of GPT-5. So we know that GPT-5 is basically going to be the flagship model with full capabilities, which is going to be likely the most powerful version with maximum reasoning abilities, knowledge and context handling. GPT-5 Mini is quite likely to be a smaller, faster, more cost-effective version optimized for simpler tasks. Following the pattern of GPT-40 Mini, this would be designed for applications where cost and speed matter more than maximum capability. Think, you know, chatbots, basic content generation or high volume API usage. Then we have GPT-5 Nano, which is the most lightweight version, possibly designed for edge computing, mobile applications or scenarios requiring extremely fast inference. There's also a screenshot that was leaked. I'm going to leave that in the description, but it's going to be no surprise because we've already used models like this before. Now, another feature that is quite likely is a one mil context window. So essentially what this means is that when you talk to a large language model, you know how you can uh, talk to the model quite a lot and how the model can see and use some tokens, the prompts you send to your message and the model's internal memory of the token conversation so far and the model's output are also going to sort of take up space. And the reason we kind of want a longer context window is because it means that you have better continuity a larger context window allows the model to remember more of the conversation so it can refer back to earlier details without forgetting them. And this is great for multi-turn conversations, code bases, legal documents, and ongoing projects. And, you know, if you feel, you know, if you feel to, you know, feed it like a whole research doc and, you know, set it a set of notes, this is, you know, going to allow the model to understand the full picture instead of just fragments, which is, you know, allowing it to answer more nuanced questions more accurately. So this is going to be really, really important for future models going forward as we open up more use cases. And I wouldn't be surprised if GPT-5 has this one mil context window.
Now, the next thing that I do suspect from GPT-5 is, of course, increased multimodality. On screen, I've essentially got a screenshot from a feature that was meant to be released with GPT-4.0, but we actually never got this feature. We never got the ability to have ChatGPT analyze and understand audio at a rate that other models do. This is a feature that's available in Google Gemini, but you have to understand that this is a remarkably useful feature because audio is one of the many ways that we, you know, communicate. So essentially, previously in a version of GPT-4.0, when it was released, there was a section on the web page called Exploration of Capabilities. Most people didn't really see this section because it was all the way down at the bottom of the web page. But essentially, it allowed you to do many, many different things. And over time, we got several of those features eventually added to GPT-4.0. And so it's quite likely that some of these features are going to be added in GPT-5 because a lot of people are expecting a huge, huge update. So, you know, adding audio to the model where we can input audio files is going to be something that I do suspect. Additionally, if we take a look at video as well, we do know that GPT-4.0 does have this capability for you to actually input a video in. And from what I saw, this video was 45 minutes long. So it's quite likely that we're going to be able to analyze videos, long videos for some time as well. So I do suspect that GPT-5 will have this on launch. I could be personally wrong, but I just suspect that considering the fact that other AI providers don't currently offer this, and considering the fact that, you know, they've already solved this, like they've already done this with GPT-4.0, maybe they just didn't do it due to inference costs or overall demand. I do think them adding it to GPT-5 would be something that is quite likely. Now, another thing as well is that I think they're probably going to try and reduce hallucinations. This is because most people don't realize that according to OpenAI's internal tests, the newest models like O3 and O4 Mini, which are called reasoning models, they hallucinate much more often than the company's previous reasoning models, O1, O1 Mini, and O3 Mini, as you know, way more than the traditional non-reasoning models like GPT-4.0. Now, the problem is, is that LLMs hallucinate because they produce plausibly sounding but factually incorrect or completely fabricated information. And that's because of the way that they're fundamentally designed and trained. LLMs are essentially, you know, as some, you know, I'm not even going to get into this debate because I know people are going to cook me for this, but LLMs are just trained to predict the next word in a sequence based on patterns found in their training data, not by knowing facts or verifying accuracy. Now, there's a whole different kind of research where people think that these models you know do have their internal word models and there's so many different research papers i'm not going to dive into it that much but the point is is that the way how these models are they're basically designed so that they're gonna make some mistakes it's basically baked into their architecture now maybe there's a way for OpenAI to potentially solve that i don't know if they're going to completely solve it but i do know that it's quite likely that gpt5 will hallucinate a lot less and it's important that we do get this solved because if we don't get this solved then there are many different use cases where these models simply just won't be allowed to be used because even a 0.1 percent error rate is just going to be too high think healthcare and legal you really can't have an llm citing something that didn't exist there's been already countless examples where an llm has cited a case study in legal for example that it hasn't existed and a lawyer you know, someone working in law has, you know, cited these cases that hasn't existed. It's, it's absolutely crazy that this would even happen. So we do need to be careful with that. But I do think that it's quite likely that they've baked the reasoning down. I could be wrong, but I do think that that is true. Now, of course, with point number eight, I do think that GPT-5 is going to be a ton more agentic, considering it's designed to function as an autonomous agent that can proactively manage multi-step tasks rather than just being another chatbot i think this is going to be something that catches most people off guard most people do forget that we're moving towards the agentic era and so i think most people will be very surprised when they realize that gpt5 is essentially not just going to be a chatbot but they're quite likely it will be a feature where you can you know ask gpt5 to go ahead and do this task and it's able to call on a bunch of different tools just like o3 and essentially it will do so many different things for you that I think as well, the average person is going to get really surprised by what ChatGPT can do because I think that's like the mass market and most people just know ChatGPT. So 
GPT-5, considering the fact that like it's going to be designed differently, I think that being baked in where it's going to decide essentially, okay, I can go off and do this is going to be really, really interesting. And this bakes into my next point, which is the fact that dynamic reasoning is one of the key, key things. So, you know, the model features adapted reasoning, which, you know, allows it to adjust its computational intensity based on the task complexity. So simple queries receive quick responses, while complex problems trigger deeper analytical processes. And this dimmer switch approach optimizes both speed and accuracy. Now, what you're looking at is a screenshot from a Copilot, which is, you know, I haven't seen this for anyone else. So it's quite likely that Microsoft did release this to a select few users just to see how the model is going on. But we can see here it says smart, which is called thinks deeply or quickly and based on the task. And that's exactly what GPT-5 is designed to do. And like I said, if the reasoning is dynamic, if the average person uses a model and sometimes it says, hmm, let me think about this and then goes off and does something, the average person has never used a reasoning model. And so I think there's going to be probably an onslaught of new individuals into the AI ecosystem at a deeper level because of this feature. So it should be really, really interesting to see how that goes down. And then last, uh, something that most people won't be thinking about but of course is the safety. So you have to understand that if we have a model that is, you know, smarter than humans in every way, and I'm not saying that that's super intelligence, but I'm saying that let's say it's able to go off on the internet and do things within seconds that most people can't do. It's also able to be more human than humans because GPT 4.5 is a probably, you know, more human than humans according to some research papers. I think we have to understand that this model is pretty dangerous. Now, of course, there are probably going to be dangers in the super alignment way where you need to, you know, have a model that actually listens to what you do. But of course, at the same time, we need to have, you know, safeguards on how convincing the model is. Um, you know, OpenAI recently updated ChatGPT to avoid providing unsolicited mental health advice, um, you know, to protect the at-risk users. And of course, you know, there's just multiple ways that this model can be used in terrible ways. I mean, if you've got a model that's just super, super good, you have to make sure that, you know, your ability to ensure it doesn't get jailbroken is really, really top notch. So it's probably going to be a state of the art model that's probably ahead of many other, you know, companies by three to five months. So it's quite likely that the enhanced safety features might be a bit different, especially if they figured out some unique things. I'm not entirely sure what they are and what you're looking at is, you know, a weak to strong generalization where they're basically saying, you know, how on earth are we supposed to um, control a super intelligent AI? So, you know, what they've done and in this paper was have a, you know, uh, you know, not a dumb LLM, but like an LLM who's not as much capabilities and have it control a larger LLM that's, you know, much smarter. And they basically see, you know, if we can figure out how to do that, then we could potentially figure out how to control super intelligence. So overall, let me know what the features you think are coming for GPT-5. I'd be very intrigued to see what you guys think.